it is that sort of intersection of functionality of providing shelter, of providing housing, but also being cognizant of how we live socially. And co-housing's great in that you do have your own space, but then there's, there's shared amenities. It'll have uh, a shared laundry, shared workshop, and uh, veggie gardens, orchards, chickens. A library, space for craft, um, playground, trampoline, maybe even a cubby house, and just open space. There's a lot of unit developments which are good because it's that medium density housing that we need, but a lot of it's concrete and it's, it's not very appealing. So in this co-housing model, having that shared open space and of course living right across the road from a park is fantastic too. It's a deliberative development, which means that the clients are in the site um, they're looking to develop the site, manage it themselves, and eventually they will also be the, the residents to the site. And it actually delivers a triple bottom line. So not only financial sustainability, but um, environmental sustainability above the six stars, that's standard in Victoria now, but social sustainability as well. Uh, I think the context in which I read about it was talking about um, in Europe, issues with housing affordability, with people not being able to get into the housing market. Uh, looking at a range of environmental challenges and just the need to live more wisely. Even in terms of just general lifestyle, I like the idea of having a, you know, a social setting where I can have my own space, have a, but also have a social space where there's other people that I'm living with and not being closed in from the world. We use environmental psychology uh, and we also use like spatial proxemics uh, and a whole raft of other disciplines as well as building design and architecture to deliver a project that brings people together in community. This idea that instead of having one large common space where everyone's on top of each other, a series of smaller spaces means you can have gatherings of two to three people in one space while the family's using another space to eat outdoors and they have opportunities to withdraw. One of the most important things in designing communal housing is to create opportunities for people to choose how much they interact. And I know I've often thought since we moved to Frankston about 10 years ago how great it would be to live in the centre of town, amenities, access, being close to things, but being on moderate incomes that's just not sort of seemed attainable. I don't drive so the fact that it's close to public transport's is what's really good for me. It's close to everything I need to get to so it makes life easier. You know, it's just walking distance from the beach, walking distance to public transport, to the shops, hospitals, uh, all the resources that we have around here. You know, it means that people don't need to have two cars. They might be able to get away with just one. I'm really looking forward to being able to continue to ride to work, to carpool with others that are heading in the same direction. When I'm older, I'm being able to walk everywhere by myself. I mean, we think Frankston's a fantastic place in terms of uh, all the facilities and resources it has uh, and, and the location that we're uh, looking to, to do this is, is right in the middle of all of that. So uh, really excited about that aspect of it. I've worked as a carbon accountant and I know about measuring emissions and I know about carbon inventories. I like that idea of living more simply so that others can simply live, but it's really hard. The pull is towards consumption and towards our lives being more and more complex. Uh, and I think often one of the ways in which we can make it easier to live more simply is by doing that with others. I know that Frankston is developing a great reputation for being a sustainable city, which is fantastic. But when I think about a lot of the people I know locally and how we actually live out our lives, there's a lot more we can be doing and there's a lot more we need to be doing. Back in the day also, I worked as an environmental consultant for a couple of companies as well. And so I have a passion for the environment. And I, what I love about this co-housing development is that uh, we're going to use sustainable products. How can we share our homes and our neighbourhoods in a way that we use less things, that we waste less things, um, that we share more? Uh, similarly, I would love to build something sustainable, um, sort of cutting edge, solar panels and new technology, whatever's on offer at the time, but again, just wondered if we'd be able to afford that with young kids and um, again, pooling our resources and doing that together actually opens those doors. We managed to keep one of the largest eucalypt trees in the front garden because that's a really dominant tree and it's a, it's a nice feature to have in your community. And really looking forward to building something that puts as little footprint as possible on the environment. Having lots of solar panels, uh, a house that is cool just by the fact that it's got lots of thermal mass. 
yeah, just a, a house that's comfortable uh, and pleasant to live in without consuming lots of uh, lots of resources. One is just the, the passion that these guys have got for, for sustainability within the project and it's just exciting to see that. So the amount of thought that they're putting into sustainability and how I guess holistically the, the, the project's going to work on a sustainability level is really, is really um, amazing to see. If we work hard at designing well, then we can actually live well in neighbourhoods and we can create good neighbourhoods. And I think ultimately that means that our town functions well. And also it means that there is less stress on other help services because people can get help more immediately from family and friends that they're neighbours with. There's a common house in the middle which sort of facilitates a lot of communal activities such as um, potluck dinners, birthday parties, grand final celebrations. There's communal vegetable patches, there's a common laundry so taking out the laundries out of each of the apartments. Um, sharing storage, which means they also share their belongings, but it also promotes the idea of incidental interaction. So, you know, from the common garages, uh, you might bump into somebody on the way, strike up a conversation and begin to understand what it is to live in community. I love Frankston, you know, I want my kids to grow up here in a, a safe uh, environment and uh, one that really fosters growth and living together in a really positive way. I am looking forward to buying together, shopping together, growing food together, preserving together, so learning some of those ancient home crafts and actually putting them into practice. But rather than doing it on your own and seeing it as a chore, actually seeing it as a life-giving community activity. Because my mum says maybe I could be the one to collect scrap, to go around and collect scraps for the chickens. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to is, is living in a, a place that really fosters uh, getting to know the people that live, live around you. Uh, sharing meals together, uh, bumping into people on your way to and from work, uh, doing projects together. Uh, but it's not far to knock on someone else's door and ask if they've got an onion or an egg or to share a meal once in a while. People are starting to see a different way of living, like the community living. Want to design a community that they can um, live in together and grow all together and just have their kids grow up and play with each other. I know when our second child was born we sent out thank yous to people that had given us gifts and said it takes a village to raise a child. It's easy to say that but how many of us actually feel like we live in a village? but I guess this is, this is it, it's our little village and we hope that as much as we'll have something good and close knit, um, that there'll be an openness too to the community and those that live around us, that they can catch the vision too. And I think uh, this is really the way of the future and, and I'd love to see our place being a place that is uh, a model for other people to come, uh, to visit, and, and get a feel for, hey, yeah, we could do this. This is something that, that is doable and achievable. For Frankston, I think it would be, be something that would really be a showcase for Frankston. And I guess the other thing I was reflecting on is, is, is seeing this kind of development and, and the social and environmental aspects of it outside of the inner suburbs, outside of the CBD, in an area that you don't necessarily associate with, um, with being super aware of those issues is, is also really exciting. And that's where I guess I'm excited about partnering with Frankston Council and not just local government but state government um, in sort of setting a new standard uh, and helping people think more creatively and imaginatively about the future and I think a lot of people aren't going to do that until they see something that actually works. Uh, but I know Frankston has this can-do attitude and really wants to support sustainable initiatives and we're looking forward to partnering with the council and creating something really new and exciting for this region.